good afternoon. Hello, my name is Frankie Keaton, known as a wise entrepreneur. And my guest speaker today is a dear friend of mine called Maria Kimora. Is that right, Maria? <laughs> Did I get that Kimora, right? Kimora, perfect. Excellent. I'm going to introduce Maria Kimora on my YouTube channel. I'm really looking forward to this interview and this talk. Maria Kimora has got so much she's going to talk about and say to us and share her wisdom and all her knowledge of what she does and who she is and why I know she is a great person. And I'm looking forward to this interview. So Maria, how are you, my dear friend? Are you okay? And thank for coming on my YouTube channel. Well, thank you for having me and thank you for allowing us to have a yeah, it's definitely a short period of time because we have so many topics we could uh, discuss about and I'm deeply grateful and appreciative of you reaching out to me. So thank you for that. Maria, I've known you, I'd say roughly round about, it's about six or seven months, isn't it, Maria? We met I think so. A platform called Global Live Speakers because we are motivational public speakers. I'm mean, very passionate about that. And Marie is going to touch on why she does public speaking. She's going to share a little bit about her background, where she lives and who she is and why she's so special. So Maria, take it away, my dear friend. Why are you so special? <laughs> well, I'm special because I, I believe I got the opportunity to come on this planet as a human. Uh, so I can exp experience life fully with emotions and not living actually based on the basic instinct, which is survival. Eat or <laughs> be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very complex, a complex experience, you know, to live as a human from my perspective, because there are so many feelings that we need to learn to work with and at the same time, we need to learn to identify them. So yeah, this is why I believe uh, this is why I believe I'm so special because I have this huge, fantastic opportunity to still be alive today and experience life with whatever life offers to me. So that's why I'm special. I know that you're special, Maria. I can see that you have a lovely, smiling face. I I really you. Like that. Maria, can I touch on? I'm not sure where you're from, but I know that you live in Japan. Is that right? Tell us yeah. where you're from. And well, I was born in Romania. Why you live, why you moved to Japan? Okay, so I was born in Romania. Uh, and well, as life has its funny ways, for some reason, uh, since a young age, I knew that I wasn't meant to live my, to live my life where I was raised and born. Um, I always had this desire of wanting more. I had this curiosity of seeing new places, meeting new people, although I was very shy, actually, um, when I made the decision to, to actually run away from home, because this is what I did. So I at least, guys, don't do this to your parents, because you're poor parents. I now I am a parent, so I know how uncomfortable that would be. But please don't do that. It's, a, it's nasty. <laughs> So I got married. Maria. Why? I was. What do you mean by Maria? I was almost eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Almost eighteen. And that's so. Really brave. I think it's really brave. It's the fact that he's a teenager and leaving home to go to another country. I think that's really brave, Maria. You've done a really big step. Down. Was very, was an exciting journey because when you I went I didn't choose to go to, to a place which I knew. I actually knew nothing. Uh, how to take a train, where to go to, where I was going to live. I was very, very, how can I say? Very, <laughs> let's call it <laughs> excited about life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't afraid. I, I did do my best for example i had to walk 14 kilometers until the train station and i did that in the middle of the night so there were i was a, still a child so i at least knew how to protect myself like 
go into the bushes, hide behind the trees when I would see a car coming because I, uh, that much I knew, I don't know who is in this car or what might happen to me. So when I would see the lights from far away, I would hide myself in the bushes. And I did that until I got to the big city and there was a lot of lightning. Of course, there, uh, there I felt safe. So I carried on, on my journey <laughs> until the train station. So from there, I took a ticket and went to, the, to Bucharest, to the capital, to the big city. Wow. And is Romania, is it, is it a cultured city or a cultured country, um, Maria? Um, what, what, because you left Romania, did you, what did you leave behind from Romania and what did you gain come to Japan? Is that right? You live in Japan now, is that right, Tim, Maria? Yeah, I what got married at a very young age and because I got married, um, well, at least I come from a culture where you, you need to, when I was younger, now I'm much older, my mom always used to tell me that I need to follow my husband <laughs> if I were to get married. And I read a lot of fairy, fairy tales and pretty much this was the pattern. You need to follow your husband. Where he goes, you go. You are there to support him. But this is what I did. I got married and I came to live in Japan with my husband. Now, what I've learned Actually, I had a huge uh, culture shock when I came to live to Japan and I was coming from Romania. In Romania, people are different. Here, there is this culture, for example, what I love about Japan is that every, in every, at, at least 99% of the places where you go to, to do your groceries or to ask for information, usually people give you a smile and if you buy something they say thank you and they ask you do you need something else they're very polite they're they're always um, making conversation mindful. with you they're very mindful Maria. yeah yes and this is embedded in the the the, um, the the services when you work in services you need to it's a must for you to be kind to have a, a lower tone of voice not to speak too fast so it's easy and you have a lot of clarity around what is it you want to do either buy something or ask for information or uh, fix something sometimes we don't have the right information this is one thing i loved about japan and when i came from romania i had the experience to go back so i could see what i've learned so i had um, some issues i needed to fix and what happened is that there was a, I, I, I noticed the chaos. So usually here you go in one specific place, you fix your problem. Now, when I went to Romania, I had to go to five places. And mind you, I didn't have a car and I wasn't familiar with Bucharest. I, am, I did live there for a while, but I'm not familiar with all the places and where, where everything is positioned and location and everything. So it's a lot of time consuming and money consuming and mental energy consuming because okay. everything is all over the places. And what are the people's attitude like in Romania than to Japan? Because I know that Japan, and I've heard that from a lot of my friends as well, Maria, that the Japanese are very mindful and very respect where they have so much respect yes, they are. for people. I love that. I think it's so important for the culture and so important for the country to have that. I mean, United Kingdom, is okay, but it could be a lot better. It depends what area you go in the United Kingdom, but I'm all up for, especially country, looking after your country, picking up litter, respecting the area. We don't have a lot of that in the UK, and it really makes me angry. You don't respect the country and the place where they live. They can be very mm. untidy and litter the place and don't care about other people. They're not mindful of other people, you know? Mm. it's really important to have that anywhere you go in any country. I know that Japan, the very um, respect will be like that. And because my spiritual meditation, as you know, my SGI buddies, is from Japan. Wow, I didn't know that. called Daisaku Ikeda. Don't we've heard of Daisaku yeah. Ikeda, yeah. The Buddhist leader. Mm. He's a great leader. And he's my mentor. They know he has so much 
mindfulness and respect and compassion, you know, for life and the humanity in life. You know, so I'm really proud to be a part of that organization, which is really making a difference in the world to create peace. You know, so um, are you open to anything? Do you have any faith or beliefs, William? Do you like any spiritual beliefs or any faith or beliefs or something that guides you on your journey through life? Uh, when it comes to spirituality, I believe there's a, a commonality in, in all practices and all religions. It's all about your perspective and it's not about you accepting a, a particular specific perspective. It's all about you really reflecting and taking what's good that's going to serve you and it's gonna help you become a better human being. And it, you can borrow from everybody. You can borrow from Al-Quran, you can borrow from the Bible, you can borrow from the, 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 the Buddhism, you can borrow something good, you can learn something from all the places. It's up to you to decide what you're gonna make inside your mind and what are the principles you're using when you operate out, of the, out in the world. So it's, I believe it that everybody has the same objective well, I to live a better I... life. So we all want to live a better life, but what the better life means, the question becomes when some people might think, oh, I want to be happy all the time. Well, that's impossible. I can vouch for that. <laughs> so Maria, I feel like now I have a connection with you on this, um, mm -hmm. you know, this video channel, what we're doing today. I know that on a deeper level, we're all connected to each other's lives anyway. And I feel, Maria, that everything what we need to become happy is in our lives and in the universe. I'm sure you've heard about the law of attraction, you know. Yes, I did. On the same level, but on a very deep level of life. So it's very profound, you know, very spiritual. So it's on that kind of level. So, um, yeah, I feel connected to you and then um, that's great. Mm -hmm. and then. Um, we're all equal, aren't we, Maria? There's nobody different from each other. No. We're equal with all the qualities. Uh, I don't know how people, when they decided to come up with this idea that there are those who are better than others, I don't see it that way. The funny thing is I cannot see it. Although sometimes um, people offer perspectives and they all that, that like they bring all the details on the table and they say, no you're definitely better and I'm like, how? And how this is gonna make a difference in somebody else's life. The way that I think, I, thinking I am better. If you tell me, oh, I think you're better than me. Well, that's not my problem, that's your problem. But I don't see myself as I am better than somebody else because what I can do, I have a brain and so other people. And I have two eyes, ears, two hands, two feet. I can smell, I can taste, I can hear. So what I can do, you can. And there are other people who are actually, those are the better people. Those who are completely different and they, they actually are capable to do what we actually should. We, we, for us, it's something um, normal. No, nothing special about it. But think about, I always think about someone who maybe doesn't have a hand. What I see with you, Maria, yeah, is that you respect yourself and you love yourself. And it took me a oh, long definitely. time to get to that point. I'm still working on that. As a Buddhist, that's why, it's, that's why I went into spiritual meditation, you know, so that I could really love the person who I am. And I think that's mm. what he is, Maria, in, in society, is that a lot of people don't even love themselves. It's true. Oh. It's, scary. it's scary. I agree with you. It's no. scary. They don't want to take a picture without makeup and look at their picture without a filter because they don't want to see themselves. In, and one thing that I, I came to understand and realize that I'm not my body. I am not. I am someone who lives inside this body, but I'm not my body. I like that. That's why. Yeah. And so I can look in the mirror whenever I want, either with makeup or without, either with clothes or without, because I'm no, I'm not my body. So I don't get attached with the fact that, oh, I'm overweight or, oh, I, I had some 
in my past that oh now I have something on my face or I don't wear the perfect makeup. I don't know because I'm not that. I can make improvements and like to enhance my spirit, but I'm not that. I'm something else, entirely, completely different. You're real. You're real. You're yeah. Showing your true um, qualities of who you are, your true person of who you are. And so many people hide behind, um, it's like, they're like they're hiding behind the mask, you know, like, you know, they cannot. I cannot do that. I, if I if I feel like I want to cry, if I share something that's very uh, dear to my heart and it's uh, emotionally uh, strong inside me, embedded, I'm going to cry. If I want to be sad, I'm going to be sad. And I, I don't want to hide the way I feel because I believe this is what makes me human. This is what makes me special. It's really important, but Maria, unfortunately, as a man and as a male, we taught all the wrong values. And the more older mm -hmm. they get, I realize all the values that we taught are all the wrong values. And it ends up making men suffer. Why? Because we have to put on this macho image like we're bigger yeah. than everybody. When really, oh, yeah. we're just destroying oh, yeah. ourselves and making ourselves suffer and having so much pain in our lives. And that leads to either drink or drugs, what happened to me, or destruction or violence. Because they can't deal oh. their own emotions. And that's because they don't love themselves and they're not being taught to love themselves. So we and I don't think they understand even what means. And I, I what I've noticed, at least around me, from the if we I, if I may touch a little bit on the on the male side, it's that <laughs> women they have more, they have this easiness of expressing their feelings. More now with time. men it's harder because as you said there is this the, the, this teaching that was uh, placed inside the minds of the boys that you need to be strong you cannot cry you need to be uh, the provider of the house and well this was in the past now the the times are changing and more teenagers are exposed to um internet and what is it that they're looking on the internet especially 15 around 16 yeah 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 what is it that they're paying attention they're, they're paying attention to and it's not just few minutes it's four hours they go to sleep like four or five a.m in the morning and yeah. they watch something that they shouldn't be watching exactly 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 and that's what it's kind of i mean the internet is an amazing game, virtue, and it has a lot of negative impacts. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. we've all been down that route. Well, you know, I've experienced it and I know what it's like growing up as a teenager. So, and it's just there. And like you said, they're watching what they're watching for hours and they're not getting any sleep. And what happens, it starts to corrupt the mind. Then they start to do things off, treat people, derogatory or treat people in a bad way because that's what they okay. see. So we live in a very dangerous society, in a dangerous world, don't we, Maria? And it's really yeah, definitely. a highlight. That's why we're talking about values and creating values. And are we creating enough values on this world and on this planet that we're living in? And the feel the situation is now because we're not creating enough values. So for you, Maria, when you were talking about values, what values do you create on a daily basis? And why is it important to create values for our lives? Well, I, don't, I believe if, if I'm going to answer first to the second question, why is it important for us to create values? Because if we don't create values, this means that first and foremost, we don't have that, that morality, that uh, ethic, uh, that character ethic. We don't have that, that philosophy of what what am I becoming and towards what, what am I moving? And if I were to speak about my core values, my main values are connection, love, uh, compassion, and unity and community. These are my, my main core values. And of course I have others, but these are the, the ones that I offer. Uh, family, it's one of the most important ones actually for me. Family, I love, compassion, community, equality. These are my main, main core values. 
Maria, you said everything what I would probably say, and I like the way you talked about compassion, because I feel everything else is there, but there's not enough of that word compassion. Mm. Such a powerful virtue to have, and such a powerful tool to use. You know? And we talk about prayer as well, because I pray a lot. Prayer is very, very powerful, but compassion is even more, because it means compassion and respecting and valuing humanity and people's lives. And we don't do that. No. It's challenging it is. So people understand compassion on a deeper level and what that is, the world's going to be a better place because I feel it's moving towards that anyway, to be honest with you. The world is moving towards a better place because people are realising, you know what? I need to work on myself because my true happiness is not external. It's got to be inside, it's got to be there. So I've got to work on myself to be the best Maria Camara or the best Frankie Kington that I can be and be true to who I am to say, I'm not perfect, but I'm going to get better and I'm going to do better the next day or the next week. Indeed, I totally agree with you. And yeah, I, I think the world, from my perspective, I believe the world is going to be divided. There are those who are come a strong, who have a strong foundation. They come from the I call it the, the conservative side. Yet they have strong core values, yeah. and they're grounded. They come from this place where we, where where they still got to experience that sense of community or the, that sense of unity. And there are those who are raised in this chaos. There's no one around, they're alone all the time. So they're, they don't have these role models. Uh, so they can get inspired and they can improve and become better human beings. I, th I believe this is what's lacking. And I think there's a, a misunderstanding when it comes to self-love. I don't, I don't believe people understand what means because when you say love, they, most of the people think about feelings, but it's not about feelings. Self-love, for example, it means if it's required of you to, if you want to, one simple example, I want to lose weight. And if I know that in the morning I burn 25% more of fat, why on earth wouldn't I give myself some love? And yeah, understand that's going to be some discomfort. But guess what? In the beginning of a relationship, you also go through discomfort. You don't go to the lady and you already start kissing her <laughs> or the other way around. Yeah, there, yeah. there has to be that space. So when you when you make decisions, this is how you, you give yourself some love. If I love myself enough and I know that it's going to be, uh, this is going to be the result, then why on earth wouldn't I wake up like, 5 a.m. in the morning or 6 a.m. in the morning and forget the, about the fact that it's winding or it's raining. And why wouldn't I love myself enough to give myself some discipline? Well, this is the kind of love, self-love I would like to see more of. I like that self-discipline because I feel self-discipline and willpower, Maria, is a really important way to love yourself. I, yes. I have a background of drinking drugs. And then just doing what normal boys do, getting into trouble and, you know, messing around with women and whatever we did. But, you know, mm. and I realised I don't truly love myself. I'm hiding behind the mask or hiding behind a different face. And for me to transform all that in my life now, which I've done, with being an entrepreneur, doing my self-development and working on Frankie, it's very challenging. It's very it painful. Is. You know, it takes it a lot of time, especially for men, to get to that point. You know, women are just naturally, they just, women just pick anything up very, very naturally. It's just all very mm. quick to <laughs> so you know, in touch with the emotions, in touch with the feelings, and just get on with it and cry and talk, move on, it's done, move on. Whereas men, <laughs> we've got a lot of work <laughs> to do. We've messed up the world, haven't we, Miriam? Would you say that? <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I would say that there's a perfect balance in the world. So if there was there was no necessity for each of the, the, the either for men or either for women, I don't believe we would have had existed. So the, the world is perfect. We choose how we, we want to see it. We all have egos, don't we, Maria? Oh, we all have yeah. egos, especially men. And women, oh, yeah. A little bit of an ego, but men have loads. But I like the way when you said balance, 
My favourite word, Maria, is equilibrium. And it's in my book, mm. what I've written. It's one of my chapters. What is your favourite word, Maria? What word do you like to hear? And do you live by that word? Oh, I like the word humble. I am working on embodying I that, that. I love that. On my yeah. self. I love that. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah usually I choose... I've, I've learned this last year to pick up three words to focus my attention on. So I place these words in places where I usually go to. So I remember I don't have to give meaning or create a specific affirmation. Just the fact of thinking and reflecting about humble, it forces me to question myself if I I, I did my best to live my life today based on that word or definitely tomorrow it's something I need to keep in mind. Humility is like that as well and having humility. So that's a nice humility I think I think it's one of the for from my perspective it's such a beautiful thing to see someone who has a, a wealth of knowledge and there's someone who comes from the perspective of ego and you see this person who has a wealth of knowledge just listening, just listening. It's, it gives such a sense of peace and you see how the ego is struggling to gain field and show that, hey, I am better than you. And yeah, this is how you should be doing it and blah, blah, blah. And uh, here it's like very smooth and quiet water and there's nothing that you can like mess up that water. It's total balance, perfect calm. And I love that. I like that crowd, and this is something I want to have. Excellent, excellent. I like the way you talked about um, listening, because I'm a mentor and coach, and one of our qualities, one of our virtues is listening. Yeah, definitely. And I know that being a good listener can get you very, very far in life. Yeah, yeah. definitely, I agree. Two ears, one mouth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Less is more always. So it's really important, like you said, to be a good listener. And as a coach, you have to be a good listener, have exceptional listening skills, have exceptional yeah. questions, feedback in them exceptional questions. Yeah. And that's, it's, you know, and have an exceptional you know, response or feedback to what that person's talking about. So thanks for highlighting that, Maria. I feel on the same wavelength with you. What we have in common, You're welcome. You have that in common in your life as well. So, Maria, yes, you, you said you work, don't you, Maria? You've got a job, yes, I do. And I do work entrepreneur on the side, aren't you, Maria, as well? So, you've been, I'm doing my best for now. On everything is on pause because I am learning a lot in my new job as a HR recruiter and translator at the same time. I'm pretty, I believe, I do more than one job in one. Excellent. I don't have something specific. I have a lot of things that I'm doing at the same time during the day. And I, I think that I believe this is the fact. Uh, and actually, this is one of the reasons why I enjoy the job. Because I, I do things that are related to my own business. And at the same time, I don't do the same thing every day. I wasn't <laughs> born to, to, to do the same thing every single day. I think a lot I love of people a like that nowadays, aren't they, Maria? Especially the entrepreneurs and the thought leaders like what we are. I mean, people have to understand words like entrepreneur and thought leader and CEO and managers and directors and understand the different roles and what them words actually mean before they go into it. And entrepreneurs yeah. are very multi-skilled, aren't they, Maria? They're like oh, yeah. <laughs> juggling balls, you know? It's pretty much uh, everything you're doing by by yourself. You're doing the the the, the so you're you are a secretary. You are the representative. You are the salesperson. You are the coach for your team. You are pretty much everything. Wow! As a one person, as as a one one band. person who does it well, does it all. If you want to do it well. If you're thinking about the future and in the future you want to hire other people, you need to know how to do this kind of stuff so you can teach them. And also you can ask specifically what's required of them. So Maria, three tips on an entrepreneur. What would you teach your clients or customers 
or somebody you want to be an entrepreneur. So I'm just happy to say you're a mentor and you are a coach or your business coach. Yeah. What are the three things is what you would teach your clients or customers? And I can share mine with you. Okay. My first one is really um, the way you prime your mind in the morning. What I would be, not, this is how it's going to get you to go on with the day. But before prime yourself in the morning, plan your day, plan your day before. This would be number one. Because you don't have to wake up in the morning and think about, oh my goodness, what am I going to do today? If possible, if you have the opportunity, well, plan one week before. Like it's going to make your, your life easier. And what I've discovered from my own experience, the mind loves uh, organization, doesn't like chaos. And I'm learning so, that. So, Maria, it's really important that we feed our subconscious mind. Oh, we definitely, yes. And we're doing that with the tasks that we do on a daily basis, like you're talking about. Maria, was that right? Yes. Yes, and you don't have to, I, I don't believe it's a good idea to overwhelm yourself with a to-do list. Pick up three and choose the most important one and complete them. And I, I am sure that the second and the third you'll, you'll complete. And another one thing that I've learned from a, a lady, I don't recall her name. Um, this is when it comes to creating content. But she said that it's a good idea to take a piece of paper, A4 paper, and well, you can try it. I've tried it. In the beginning, I, I had no ideas, but then I've learned to place a paper all, the, all over the place. So when something comes to my mind, I write it right away without any distractions. I don't leave, leave it for later. This is something I'm practicing right now. I so, like. so when it comes to uh, going back to creating content, and sorry for interrupting you, uh, is take a piece of paper, sit down and set a timer. Start in the beginning with five minutes, 10 minutes and place the idea on paper and wait for your mind to come up with the answers. And you will have specific times of uh, during the day where, where you do this specific task. You don't do other stuff. You don't distract yourself. You don't play music on background. For, for some people it works better. But my case, it works when it's silent. Everything is silent. Me with my mind only, no distractions. I love that, Maria. I like the way you said it, write things down. It's really important. That's what I did. It's always write information and stuff down. I like the way you start your morning, which is really important. I mean, they always go with the power of free. Just free virtues, what you do every day. Really important. For me, obviously waking up out of bed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Having my breakfast in the morning. Yeah. I do my spiritual meditation as well. That's really important. And I combine that with exercise as well. Oh, so right. I always do them free things every morning. And it gets up quite early. And you say that people mm. up at a certain time in the morning, you know, have more chance to succeed and, you know, get on with what they need to get on with in their lives. And they're more productive throughout the day. So they're the three virtues, what I would do, I'm touching on your three virtues, which I thought was excellent, about writing things down, mm -hmm. being a listener and being, you know, at peace with yourself and feeding your subconscious mind is really important. So remember, mm -hmm. that, ladies and gentlemen, what Maria said about in three tasks, what she does, and in three tasks, what I do. Really, really important to make sure that you're doing three tasks which are creating value for you every day because you can build on them tasks, can't you, Maria? And think you can yeah. build on them. Do you tend to build on them? Uh, they definitely. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Because it's really important that as entrepreneurs, we have quite a few tasks what need doing, but it's really important to focus on the jobs or the tasks what need doing now or where you feel are bringing you in the more money. Because unfortunately, we have bills and we have lives and we have family and things to pay out. So we focus on where the money is and where the energy and what's bringing in the money first. Then we focus on the next 
business ventures or the next which is what we need to focus on. So it's one step at a time. And when you do that, your life becomes a lot more easier. And as Maria touched on before, you're not too confused or everything's too chaotic or too rushed or complex. You know, so let's just be steady. Be one step at a time. That's why I said free tasks, which we all can do in a day on a daily basis. And we build on that and we get better. So Maria, thank you so much for being on my YouTube channel. I've really enjoyed interviewing you today, Maria. Maria, do you want to share anything with the audience or with anybody today? What is it that you'd like to share with them? Well, I, well, I am learning to believe in simplicity. So in whatever it is you're doing, when it comes to business, when it comes to people, I think it's a great idea to reflect upon that less it's always more. I like that, you see that less is always more. It would have took me ages to think of, but Maria to come out with it and it does make sense. And there's another word as well, isn't it, Maria? Kiss, keep it short, yeah. simple. Yeah. And you be Keep it short and simple. Don't overcomplicate things. The mind has this tendency of swimming from, uh, jumping from three to three as a monkey and overcomplicates over things. And especially when it comes to decision making, you end up speaking with a lot of people. Just one example, as an example, you speak with few people and you're still confused. My goodness, what am I going to do? I'm, I still didn't decide what I'm going to do. And we come to the core values. If you know who you are, is this going to serve me? Is this going to serve the, the, the other around or the, 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 the people that this decision is, is going to affect? Is, is it really going to be of service to them or not? If the answer is no, then don't do it. Don't go for it. Simple. If the answer is yes, then go for it. Simple. As simple as that. Maria, yeah, so I can give you many examples of less is more. <laughs> this is one of the, that came to me, the one that came to my mind right now. You talked about your mind. Do you feed the subconscious mind, Maria? Do you know what that is? I'm really beginning to understand that. Do you feed the subconscious mind? Can you give an example of what I mean by that? Maybe I could give you an example if you if you feel you're not too sure about the way the way I read my subconscious mind is really through reading and meditating as I sleep but it's a it's a different way of meditating I don't I have moments that I have I do various types of meditation I don't have a specific one depending on my need but right now I'm going to choose a specific meditation but the one that I love the most is really get in touch with the unconditional love, which is source. That's the one I like the most. And that's how I work with my mind. So I can really create that inside my mind. Uh, so I can really detach myself from the body and everything and become one with the source. So that's how I, it's, that's I, one of the most powerful way I found that helped me, at least for me to get in touch, to really, what, what is this subconscious mind? Because at the end of the day, what is it? It's energy, it's pure energy stored somewhere here. I have no idea where is the specific place, but it's energy there. It's energy, it's information. And this, where this comes from. Did you hear, Maria, then? I love what she said. Energy, information. I think it's important as well, Maria, that we're feeding our subconscious mind. Like we said before, keep it short. And simple or keep it sweet or just just be just do things simpler just do it but when we feed the subconscious mind it's very important to be clear about what it is that we want with you yeah the outcome yeah definitely so yeah you go yeah oh frankie wants this let's give him that and sometimes our subconscious mind like i said i'm an entrepreneur i'm a thought leader and then i have a mission statement where they say and love to inspire one million entrepreneurs over the next 40 years. That is me feeding my subconscious mind because it's a condition oh. that I want to do something. 
So please feed that subconscious mind with positive affirmations and positive virtues and qualities. So always feed your subconscious mind with positive qualities and thoughts. And really look after that mind with positive thoughts rather than yeah. negative thoughts and negative influences. And that's uh, you, that's funny you mentioned this because I do have something, a piece of paper with a statement. Uh, like right on the ceiling of my car and every single day <laughs> I read that. <laughs> it's not a, it's, it's not more of, it's more of a statement and it's an affir affirmation. I'm gonna read it to you. I don't have it with me. It's like I read it, I feel it and then it's gone. I don't recall it because I don't stay. It's all about the, the tone of voice that I'm using in that specific moment. And one thing actually, I think I mentioned in one of my lives in Global Life Speakers, it's really about how you feel. It's the feeling attached to what you're saying and then you let it go. The secret is the feeling actually. Thank you, Maria. I've learned so yeah. much from you today. Thank you. As Thank you. A leader, the voice does the body's work. So you are Thank a body you. leader, and the body is an enlightened person and a hero of the world. And I know that you are an enlightened person and the hero of the world. Me and Maria are on a global live speakers challenge platform. Mm -hmm. Facebook. We're on Instagram. Yeah. Is that right, Maria? Are we on YouTube as well? We have YouTube channels as well, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I will share that below from that YouTube video. So you'll see all that information below. Yeah. I'm going to highlight Maria's channels and what she does. So please have a look at what Maria does. She's an exceptional lady. If you like this YouTube, subscribe to my channel, hit the information hit the notification bell to get your information. Leave us a comment below, let us know what you feel about this YouTube channel. And we'll share all the information about the Globus Live Speakers. You know a lot about Maria Chitra. She's a great Chitra, really. <laughs> She's a great lady. Thank you so much, Maria, for letting me interview today. I've really enjoyed it. I really felt a real deep connection with your life. I really do. And we have a lot in common. And you know, we're very good yeah. friends. And then, um, yeah, please look out for Maria. And then, um, thanks again for tuning in. My warmest wishes to you all, and I'll speak to you very soon. Thanks again. And thanks again, Maria. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you. And take care.